Once upon a time, in the great nation of France, there was a small town called Pluinec. On the further side of Pluinec, there were two rows of huge stones. The stones were so tall and heavy, it is believed that only all the fairies in the world could have placed them upright. Not far off from the Great Stone Avenue, and on the banks of the little river Intel, there lived a man named Marzin and his sister, Rosinek. Rosinek was a very pretty girl and was treated like a princess by her brother, Marzine, who was very protective of her. He would turn down all the proposals that would come his way, asking for her sister's hand in marriage. No, thank you. My pretty little sister would one day get married to a prince, not some silly apple trader. But Marzine wasn't aware of the fact that Rosinek and her childhood friend Bernays were in love. How I hope I was a prince, so that I could ask your hand in marriage from your brother. But alas, I am a merely poor woodcutter. Well, why don't you tell my brother about us at the feast tomorrow? But... No buts. Either you tell him or I will do it myself. I don't care about the riches. I care about you and that's all. Um, but... See you tomorrow. Bye. The next day, there was a grand feast at Marzine and Rosnick's house to celebrate the beginning of the harvest season. Their house was filled with guests. Bernays was also present. Rosnick, while talking to one of the guests, gestured Bernays to go speak with her brother. Um, but... Hesitantly, he walked up to Marzine. Uh, so, Marzine, I was saying that a beggar in my house? Uh, I am not a beggar. It's me, Bernays. I am not talking about you. Marzine walked away and towards the door where a man dressed in ragged clothes stood. Everyone in the room was staring at him. Who are you? My name is Dario. I am a witch, and I have been traveling around the world for years. I was very tired and hungry when I saw your house. Please, give me some food to eat and a shelter to rest tonight. I will be forever grateful to you. Marzine thought for a while and then said, Okay, I will give you food and shelter for tonight. But in return, I want you to use your witchery and find my sister a suitable prince for marriage. I will do my best. Soon, the food was laid on the table and all the guests ate to their heart's content. Bernays did not get another chance to speak with Marzine, which left Rosinek very disappointed. That night, when all the guests had left, Dario was given the stable to retire. Inside the stable, there was a donkey and a sheep. <sighs> All right, friends. Good night. Dario lied down and closed his eyes. Outside, the full moon shone brightly and a shooting star sped across the sky. At the very moment, the donkey shook his head and smiled with delight. Hee-haw! It's finally that time of the year. Bobby! We can talk. Come on, come on. Tell me, what is up? I don't feel like talking in presence of a witch. What? He is a witch? Yes, he is a witch. I heard him when he was introducing himself to Marzane. But let me tell you, he is not a very good witch. And how do you know that? Well, witches are clever. This one here isn't even clever enough to have found out what a piece of luck might befall him tomorrow. A piece of luck? Why, don't you know? Once every hundred years, the stones on Ploanek go down to drink at the river. And while they are away, the treasures underneath them are uncovered. Ah! I remember now. 
But the stones return so quickly to their places that you certainly would be caught and punished by them unless you have in your hand a purple apple. Yes, but that is not enough. Even supposing you get safely by, the treasure will have to be picked and brought out by a person who was never sinned. Otherwise, he will crumble into dust. The donkey was about to say something when suddenly found himself unable to speak. Humph! Humph! The donkey turned towards the window and saw a shooting star speed across the sky from the other direction, implying the time that they were allowed to speak was over. He closed his eyes, and so did the sheep. But the evil Dario had heard everything. Mm. <laughs> you fools! Now I will become the richest man in the whole of France and marry Rosnick. <laughs> so the next morning, Dario sat out looking for the purple apple. He went to the market, to the jungle, and to the meadows, but nowhere could he find the purple apple. Finally, when he had almost given up, he stopped under a tree. Suddenly, something dropped on his head. Ouch! He looked down and saw it was an apple. And not just any apple, but a purple one. Oh, the angels have blessed me. Now I will become the richest man in the whole of France. <laughs> With the apple in his hand, Dario reached the stone avenue where the tall stones stood. As he was passing the long line of stones, he saw Bernays working with a chisel on the tallest of them. What are you doing there? Oh, Mr. Dario, hello. I happen to have no work to do today, so I thought I would just carve a heart on this stone. <laughs> I believe you think it will help you to win Rosnick. Bernays ceased his task for a moment to look at him. <sighs> so you know about that. Unluckily, Marzine wants a brother-in-law who has more pounds than I have pants. And suppose I were to give you more pounds than Marzine has ever dreamed of. You? Yes, I... And what am I to do to gain the money? Let me tell you that if it is a deed that is wrong, then I will not do it. I am a man of virtue. This made Dario smile. He had heard from the people of Ploanek about Bernays and how he lives by morals and virtues. But now he was sure that he was the right man for the job. What I want of you only needs a little courage. If that is all, tell me what I have to do, and I will do it. Dario walked towards Bernays and whispered the plan in his ears. Later that night, as the hour struck from the great church at Ploanek, Bernays entered the wood. He found Dario already there with a bag in each hand, and one on the ground. You are punctual. Tell me, what are you going to do with all the riches? First, I will ask for Rosnick's hand in marriage, and with the remaining that I will have, I will give it to all the poor and needy people of Ploanek. Well, let's get to work then. With the first stroke of twelve, a great noise arose over the silent heap and the earth seemed to rock under the feet of the two watchers. The next moment, by the light of the moon, they beheld the huge stones near them leave their places and go down the slope leading to the river. It seemed as if by a procession of giants had gone by. Finding it as the most opportune moment, the two men rushed towards the holes where the treasure shone brightly under the moonlight. Dario sat down holding the bags open and Bernays kept drawing the treasure out and filling them onto the bags. Now the two bags were filled and the third one was left 
when suddenly a low murmur like a distant storm broke upon Dario's ears. The stones had finished drinking and were hastening back to their places. Hurry up! They are coming! My, my hand is stuck. Help me! Oh, snap! It is too late. Take care, my friend. My life is precious. Thank you for the riches. <laughs> Bye! What? No! Dario, with the two bags, started to run when he suddenly tripped over and fell. The bags went flying in the air and dropped behind a bush. Just then, the tallest stone ran past Dario and stopped straight in front of Bernays so that no other could get past. It was the stone on which Bernays had carved the heart. Meanwhile, the other stone surrounded Dario. Um, <laughs> well, you cannot harm me. I have the purple apple. This not apple, this quince fool. And then all the stones encircled him. No! Dario at once turned into dust. Meanwhile, the tall stone spoke to Bernays. You are a good man. You deserve to live. Run before my brothers come. But, but my hand is stuck. Not anymore. And just like that, Bernese's hand was not stuck anymore. He at once got up. Thank you so much. There is no need to thank me. You gave me a heart. I am just repaying the favor. Now run! Oh, don't forget your bags of treasures. But they are not mine. Bernays hung his head low. I took it from here. You are honest. Tell you what, now the bags are yours. Now go at once. Run! Bernays smiled and ran away. When all the stones had finally taken their respective places back and settled, Bernays picked the bags lying behind the bush and went home. The next day, Bernays went to meet Marzine and told him all about what had happened. Rosinek and Marzine were shocked. That wicked witch wanted to marry my sister? Well, no point dwelling in the past. He got what he deserved. Yes, and I have also understood that only the riches cannot buy my sister happiness. I am sorry, my child. It is okay, brother. You did what any brother would do. And you, Bernays. I did not know that you and my sister were in love with each other. And to be honest, I am glad I did not, because I would have never allowed it. But now, now I can see past my blindness. You are a good man, Bernays, and more importantly, an honest one. And thus, Rosinek and Bernays were married in a grand ceremony. Marzine was very happy for he finally found the suitable person for his sister. But guess who was happier? Ah, sweet! Talk time in broad daylight! Bring on the party! Bobby!